Thank you, Dr. Olasky. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Amin. I'm from McGill University, and uh, I'm going to cover the uh, fundamentals of electrosurgery. Thank you for the panel for inviting me. Um, just a note for those who want to write the exam, the lion's share of uh, what you get tested on is really on the fundamentals of uh, electrosurgery, things, uh, adverse events. Those are really the high yield uh, topics uh, for you to pay attention to. Is there a laser I can use? Is this the laser? Yes, that right. uh, okay, perfect. I have no disclosures. Um, these slides were made by uh, the FUSE committee. Uh, the, um, SAGES has received funding from, uh, from industry to create uh, a FUSE program, um, but uh, nothing has impact on the talk that I'm going to give. So there's a lot of energy devices, uh, like Dr. Olasky said, uh, that we use in the operating room every day. They come in different shapes, different forms. Uh, by far and wide, the most uh, common one we use is uh, radio frequency electrosurgery. And that's the BOVI, the monopolar hook device. Uh, uh, we refer to it a lot as cautery, electrocautery. Uh, that would be radio frequency electrosurgery. So that's what we're going to focus on. These are the objectives. So how does radio frequency electrosurgery work? When we take that Bovi pencil, we apply it, uh, we press the button, and we see the magical tissue effect, uh, what actually happens? So radio frequency electrosurgery is actually uh, the intracellular conversion of basically electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic energy that's converted into kinetic energy inside the cells. And that kinetic energy is then converted through friction to thermal energy. And it's that thermal energy that's then responsible. It manifests itself on the tissues as things like vaporization, tissue desiccation, coagulation, and fulguration, which uh, we're going to cover. Okay? Not cautery. So how does it work? So when we apply a current across the cell, okay, you create a polarity across these cells, a positive and a negative. Okay, and because of that, the positive and negative ions across the cell migrate uh, to their respective locations. But remember, the electrosurgery, radio frequency electrosurgery is alternating current, not direct current. So the polarity rapidly switches back and forth. When uh, this type of current is go. applied to the cell, the alternating polarity causes those ions to rapidly oscillate back and forth inside the cell, including some large proteins. This process results in frictional forces that are responsible for elevating the cellular temperature. So essentially what it does is because you have big ions like proteins that are negatively charged, they go back and forth. This occurs at hundreds of thousands of times per second. Okay, and that causes friction, and that friction it creates the heat, the thermal effect, okay? So what happens when we raise the temperature of the cells? When those ions go back and forth, it raises the temperature of the cell, what happens? So we start at 37, by the way, I apologize to my American colleagues, I didn't use Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius, I realize I'm from McGill in Canada. But anyway, uh, 37 degrees Celsius is normal. When we go up to 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, um, that, uh, the, their cell death occurs over the course of a few minutes. Uh, the cell membrane uh, starts to break down, becomes porous, the cell dehydrates, and, and the cell dies. Now, 60 to 90 degrees Celsius, that's a very important range to, to remember. And now I'm, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more throughout the talk. But just remember this range, because two processes happen here desiccation and coagulation, okay? I'm gonna have, the next two signs are gonna focus on that. Um, and you can raise it higher, you go to 100 degrees Celsius, and what happens to water when you raise the temperature above 100 degrees Celsius? It boils. So literally the cell pops, it vaporizes, and that's what you see as cutting in when, you, when you dissect tissues. Uh, so that's cellular vaporization. And you can even go higher than that. You can go to 200, 400, 600 degrees Celsius, and when you go to really high temperatures, it, what happens is the organic material uh, breaks down into elemental carbon. That's why it becomes black. You get that black hue. That's called carbonization. You can also break down the organic material and it breaks down into elemental sugars. Uh, so it creates uh, basically caramel. So it's called caramelization. I did not come up with that term, but it actually is a thing from the FUSE curriculum. Anyways, uh, and that's why the, it becomes sticky and it sticks to your tip of your, uh, your Bovi pencil. Uh, so that's, that's the process that happens when you go to really high temperatures. So again, the 60 to 90 degrees Celsius is a really important phase. That's below the 100 degrees necessary to vaporize a cell. 
two things happen. First is tissue desiccation. What happens is the cell membranes, they break down, water evaporates, the cells shrink, okay? And, uh, and then creates a white coagulum. The other thing that happens is you get uh, protein coagulation. So uh, the proteins, they denature, okay, at very high temperatures, and then when it cools down, it reforms, but not in its original form. It, it reforms in a haphazard manner. And that with desiccation is what you see uh, happening in this temperature zone, okay? So what is cautery? We haven't talked about cautery just yet. And we hear that term all the time, electrocautery. Um, what is cautery? Cautery is the passive transfer of heat. So if I took a match and I burned my finger, um, that would be direct cauterization. Uh, that's one way to create thermal effect and tissue effect. Um, you know, you can use branding iron. Uh, in the Middle Ages, they used to take uh, hot pokers and to stop uh, wounds from bleeding. Um, but that, that is true cautery. What we use is electrosurgery. There's a fundamental difference. And it's more than just the semantics behind it. Because the problem is with these devices is they're so easy to use. You take, a, you take it in your hand, you press a button, and you see the effect right then and there. So intuitively, your mind thinks that that tip is just burning what I'm touching. And you think it's a real cautery device. But it's actually not. You're, the importance for this and to emphasize the nomenclature is because you want to understand that when you're pressing there and you're touching the tissues, you don't see it, but there's a whole current that's going through the body of the patient, and it can cause all sorts of problems. So that's why we emphasize not cautery. Let's talk about the ESU, the electrosurgical unit, or the generator. This is the big machine that's in the corner with all the knobs and the numbers that the float nurse changes the numbers for you and you connect the device to. It's called an ESU. What it, it actually has a function. Uh, it's not just some fancy thing where you plug into the wall. So what does it do? It does three things. First of all, it takes the wall outlet, okay? So the outlet in your, in your home, it, it gives you radio frequency electrosurgery, but it brings it at 60 hertz, okay? 60 times per second alternating current. But it converts that for you to 500,000 hertz. Why do we need to convert it to 500,000 hertz? Why can't we just keep it to 60 hertz? Well, have you ever wondered why you, when you use the device, you don't electrocute your patient every time? And there's, that's the reason why. Because when you go to more than 100,000 hertz, you go beyond the threshold necessary to depolarize the nerves and the muscles of the body. Okay, so that's why uh, you don't electrocute your patients every time. And you want a very high frequency, you want the cells inside, sorry, the ions inside the cells to go back and forth really quickly because that's what's gonna generate your thermal effect and friction. Okay, so it's a very nice way to get predictable and very controllable tissue effect. Next is uh, you can adjust the power, the wattage. So when you say, ask the flo a float nurse, um, please put it on COAC 30, put it on cut 30 for me. What does that 30 mean? That's the power, the amount of watt, the amount of energy joules per unit time. Okay, that's what it is. So very, this is very key. Whether it's cut or coag, and they're both at 30, it's the same amount of energy per unit time that is being delivered through your circuit. Okay, so that's, that's one thing that the ESU does. And the last thing is you can control what's called the duty cycle. The duty cycle is the percentage of time that the current is actually going through your circuit. And that's what's actually responsible for the different functions like cut, coag, blend, and so on and so forth. And we're gonna talk about that uh, in the next slide after this. So again, our radio frequency, it's very, very good. And the reason why it's really good is because it del delivers controllable, predictable tissue effects. And it's the same energy that you get from the outlet that powers your microwave, your television, your hair dryer, um, if you use one, and, uh, and you, it goes beyond 500,000 hertz um, so that it doesn't depolarize the muscles and the nerves in your body. Okay, so what's the difference between cut and coag? How does that work? Um, we talked about duty cycle, and this is what it comes down to. So here we have a circuit. The patient is connected to your ESU, and we've also connected what's called an oscilloscope to your uh, circuit. And the, the reason we did that is so we can show a schematic of the voltage and the current that goes through your 
uh, circuit. So we're going to ask the uh, nurse to put it for cut for us, 30, okay? And then we activate the device, okay? What kind of current goes through the body of the patient? Okay, this is it. So there's a few things to talk about that here. Number one, you get a sine wave, okay? The reason because it's sine wave is because it's alternating current, okay? It goes back and forth like this, okay? That's why it's like that. Second thing is, notice that 100% of the time, current is going through the circuit, okay? It's not interrupted. So that 30 joules of energy per unit time is spread through time. Okay, because it's spread thinly, the amplitude is going to be low. So this is a continuous waveform. So 100% of the time, there's current going through the circuit. 100% of the time, 100% duty cycle. And because of that, it's low voltage, low energy waveform. This is cut. And then let's say we go up to 100 cut and we activate it. We're going to see something similar like this. Again, alternating current continuous waveform, 100% duty cycle, and a little bit higher voltage than you get when you get 30, okay? So this is a very key important point to know for the fuse exam. What about COAG, how does this differ? So we're gonna ask them to put it 30, okay? So again, 30 COAG, 30 cut, same amount of energy per unit time, but the difference this time is as we activate it, that 30 units, that, that 30 joules per second is now, um, is now concentrate, is concentrated in these intermittent bursts of high energy current. That 30 uh, joules per second is concentrated in these high voltage bursts of current. Okay, so because of that, it's a modulated interrupted waveform so the duty cycle is now 6% because only 6% of the time current's going through the system. And because of that, that energy is concentrated and the voltage is a lot higher, a lot more thermal effect. And this is important because this higher thermal effect is responsible for a lot of things like collateral thermal injury, uh, bile duct injuries during lab coles. It can interfere with implantable devices like pacemakers. So this is, uh, this is one of the key things, okay? So this is another important point here. High voltage, interrupted, modulated waveform. What about blend? We see this quite a lot, uh, blend, in, uh, um, on different ESUs. Um, and what does that mean? So basically, it's part, of the same, um, it's a part of the same continuum. On one hand, you have cut, which is 100% duty cycle. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have coag, which is 6% duty cycle. And in the middle, you're going to have a few different ones as well. So as you go higher duty cycle, your voltage goes down. As you go to a lower duty cycle, your voltage goes up. And blend has different functions that are uh, in between these. So this is 50% duty cycle. And because of that, the voltage is higher than it would be for cut, but lower than it would be for coax. Okay, and different uh, devices have different settings on them. Some have blend one, blend two, blend three, and these are just basically different duty cycles, okay? And again, if you go coag, you get the lowest duty cycle, which is the highest voltage, okay? So I hope that clears up some of the confusions uh, regarding the different functions. So radio frequency electrosurgery can be set up in different ways. Okay, it's a closed circuit every time. You have two electrodes. The difference between the different devices like monopolar device and bipolar device is really the function and the location of that second electrode. What do I mean by that? And I won't talk too much about this because there are talks on monopolar and bipolar instruments, but just to represent the main um, idea behind this is if you have a patient here, you have an active electrode, so that's your bovi pen, that's one electrode that you have, okay? And your second electrode is gonna be what's called the dispersive electrode, that's the pad that we put on the patient, okay? And this is connected to the generator and once you activate it, you have current going through the body of the patient. This is a closed circuit. A bipolar instrument, very similar, but instead you have two active electrodes, okay? There's no such thing as a dispersive electrode for this circuit. Uh, again, it's a closed circuit, and the current goes only through this part. Now, you can see the very different here. 
One, you have current going through the whole body of the patient, one where the current is really restricted to the immediate vicinity of the uh, device. And we'll talk some of the pros and cons uh, about that in the, the other talks. Now, again, I emphasize, this is a closed circuit. And we hear this quite a lot in the operating room. People will say, uh, have you grounded the patient? I can't tell every time I hear that. And I keep saying the patient is not grounded. Um, in the older ESU models, they had that, where they depended on the ground to complete the circuit. Um, and, and that had a higher chance of causing adverse events, uh, like current diversion injuries. So since uh, a long time ago, they stopped grounding the patients. So that doesn't exist anymore. We now have a closed circuit like this. Okay, so I wanna emphasize something really important uh, here. There's a very big difference. That Bovi pencil has two buttons on it that say cut and coag. That's not the same thing as the tissue effects. Cutting and coag can happen in a different variety of ways. So when we talk about tissue effects, they can happen regardless of whether you press cut or coag. Those are different things. Okay, and that's part of the nomenclature that's created uh, some, some uh, confusion. So the different tissue effects that can happen when you press those buttons is you can get vaporization, desiccation, coagulation, and fulguration. So let's talk about these in a bit more detail. Let's talk about vaporization and cutting. So essentially, and this is again, when you press cut, you think that that's for cutting tissue, whereas in fact, we use coag most of the time to do tissue dissection. So you can cut tissue regardless of which way. So there's different types of way you can dissect tissues, and, and here are some schematics of them. So on one hand, let's say you use cut, okay? You activate the tip, you touch the tissue, the cells, they vaporize because they go above 100 degrees Celsius, and you get a cutting effect. But because cut is a low voltage waveform, the collateral tissue here doesn't experience a rise in temperature, okay? So it stays uh, healthy, okay? On the other hand, if you use coag or a high voltage waveform, you're gonna raise the temperature of that cell higher than 100 degrees Celsius. And so you'll get a cutting effect. However, because it's a high voltage waveform, the collateral tissue that's not being going above 100 degrees Celsius will experience that 60 to 90 degrees uh, of heat. And what's gonna happen to that? You're gonna get desiccation and coagulation. Okay, so that's, you're gonna get more of a charring effect when you do that. So now a lot of questions are, well, should I be using cut all the time? No, that's not the answer. The answer is use the best energy setting for what you're doing right then and there. If you're dissecting near a very uh, important structure like the CBD, Okay, it might not be the best idea to use coag uh, at a very high uh, power. It might be better to use something else like a cut or blend, something with, with lower energy and collateral thermal spread like this. But if you're dissecting through muscle, uh, you know, and you're not close to an important structure, you want that collateral thermal spread so that you can, uh, you can get more hemostasis with your dissection. So these are some of the differences between that. Um, we'll just talk about this uh, desiccation for, for a bit. This is a really important thing that, that happens a lot in the operating room. A common scenario is you have a bleeder while you're dissecting. It bleeds, somebody picks it up with a debakey, and then you say, buzz me. And most people, when they buzz, they use coag. Now, the best way to do that is to use cut. But why is that? Let's talk about that for a second. So let's say you have a schematic here. You activate the device. Okay, this is the tissue that you have within your debakey. Because it's high voltage when you use coag, it will superficially desiccate this tissue here. But this tissue that's desiccated is now an insulator. So it doesn't conduct electricity here anymore. So you get this very superficial, very heterogeneous seal here. Okay, it's not a very strong seal. Whereas if on the other hand, you use cut, it slowly cooks the, the tissue it takes a little bit longer, but it does so more homogeneously, and it's a be much better seal because of that. So when you have a vessel here and you wanna seal it, the better way is to use cut, low voltage continuous waveform, much more homogeneous and better seal, even though it might take a little bit longer. Whereas if you use coag, 
you get this sort of heterogeneous thing that happens. It's not a very good uh, sealing. You can also uh, caramelize the tissue so it sticks and when you let go it releases the seal that you have. So for a variety of reasons it's not as good. And uh, the, if you ever look at some of those advanced uh, energy devices, bipolar energy devices, they, they are designed for hemostasis and they use a continuous low voltage waveform. So that tells you that that's the better way. And lastly, fulguration, which um, I'll just uh, mention, uh, but uh, they'll talk more in the monopolar talk. Um, this is another form of tissue effect. It's a no-touch technique. Essentially, the current arcs across uh, through air to complete the circuit. And this is really good for areas where you want that superficial desiccation. You don't want to burn things that are deeper. This is really good for very large superficial, large surface areas. There's a lot of oozing, capillary oozing. This is really good for that, like liver, spleen. Uh, some people use it also for um, uh, cytoreductive surgery as well because it doesn't have very deep penetration. Okay. And I'll just uh, skip uh, for the interest of time then. So this is a, fulguration is a very high voltage waveform. It, it has to arc across the air, so you need high voltage, just like lightning. Okay. And I'll skip over this as well. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>